If you ever find yourself in a situation where bugging out is your only option, then you better be prepared to face whatever challenges that SHTF environment that forced you out of your door is going to throw at you. And you need skills and you need knowledge to be able to do that, but you also need gear and equipment to do it more efficiently. So with that being said, I thought in this video, it would be a good idea for me to share with you what exactly I have in my bug out bag. What kind of gear am I bringing with me? What kind of bag am I using? What my sleep shelter looks like and everything Everything else related to bugging out. Now, if we're bugging out because of a very calamitous SHTF scenario, let's just say a global conflict or something of that nature, then an armed bug out might be appropriate. So in this video, we're also going to discuss things like ammunition, magazines, firearms, and everything else related to an armed bug out situation where you're not just leaving because of a hurricane, you're leaving because things have gotten very dangerous in your area. Now, one caveat to bugging out, if it's the only option you have, you better have somewhere to go. Bugging out is not just walking out your door and hoping you find somewhere better. You should have a more stable and more secure location already figured out before you leave, and then you build your equipment and you build your kit around the idea of how long it will take you to get there. And the other thing to keep in mind is that even if you have that plan, plans go wrong sometimes. So you also want your kit to be able to sustain you even if you don't make it to your location. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and dive into the gear. Let's dive into the shelter system and I'll just discuss every aspect of what I have in the sense of a bug out bag kit, especially when we're talking about an armed situation where things are very dangerous. All right, so before we get into the pack, let's talk about the pack itself. It's an Eberly Stock X31 low drag. They do have a newer model, but they don't make this particular model any longer. But either way, you can get just about the same thing with all the same features. And one thing to keep in mind about this pack is that it has a limited storage capacity. This only has a 30 liter storage capacity, which might seem kind of small, but at the end of the day, it limits your ability to stuff it full of things you don't need. So what that does for me is it keeps the weight down and it makes the pack overall more manageable while it still offers all the features that I like to have. And one thing I really like about some of the Everly stock packs is that they have a rifle scabbard built right into the pack, which is what this is right here. So you can have an AR, you can have a bolt action or whatever type of rifle you choose to throw in your backpack. You can bring it with you and have hands-free carrying of that rifle without having to worry about what you're going to do when you have to climb up something or if you have to maybe Ford a river or whatever else it's going to be. So keep all those things in mind because this is definitely a really nice pack. Everly Stock makes really good stuff. And at the same time, limit yourself in the sense of capacity so you don't overburden yourself with unnecessary weight. So now that we've talked about the pack itself and it has all the molly webbing, so there's additional attachments all over it, including on the waist belt, which you'll see here soon. Let's talk about the things that are on the outside of the pack first, and then we'll open it up and get into the inside. And I'm just trying to give everybody some ideas about how they can structure their bug out kit. And you have have to adapt it to your environment but this should give you something to work with in the sense of a starting point all right so first thing is the sleep system here this is the shelter it's a snug pack scorpion 2 and i have it attached here using the buckles that actually come with the tent bag itself which makes it really convenient for attaching it to all this molly webbing and as long as you figure out what works in the sense of weight distribution and what points on your bag can actually hold that weight it's going to be pretty easy to mount a lot of this stuff to this type of pack because molly webbing is very useful and very adaptable which this whole system is basically meant to be very modular and one idea that i had when i was building it was to basically build something that on its own by itself can do everything you would want so yes you could integrate the system with like a chest rig or something like that but you actually don't need to which was kind of my plan here so here you have the snug pack scorpion 2 now this tent is really nice and one thing i'll tell you about it is that it weighs about six pounds and it's for two people but it's also a four season rated shelter which means it can withstand heavy winds it can withstand heavy rain and it can withstand snow if need be which in the environment i'm in is very important the other reason why i wanted to choose a shelter over something like a bivy sack is because i want the element of security that a shelter adds versus what a bivy has so a bivy is much lighter and a lot easier to carry but if someone is trying to do something bad to you, they can tell if you're in a bivy or not, whereas a tent gives you a little bit of concealment, which can make them question whether or not they're going to be able to pull off whatever it is they're trying to do. So there's a little bit more security in having a shelter, especially if you have to leave camp for a certain amount of time and you want to leave anything valuable within the shelter and keep it waterproof and everything else, and that's very important to be able to do so. The other thing I like about the Snug Pack is that it's very easy to set up. Super simple installation of the poles and everything else gets the outside of the shelter up first, which is really cool because basically you can put the shelter up with the fly, which is a waterproof portion, and then 
standalone by itself, it's already a shelter. And then you put the inner tent on the inside by hooking some loops through some grommets that allows you to basically hang the inner portion of the tent inside of the rain fly. And then you have now a full sealed system that allows you to have a fully enclosed structure, which I find to be very beneficial, especially in this environment. So this is a really cool system, really easy to set up, comes with everything you need. And like I said, it weighs about six pounds. So that's a little bit heavier than a bivy will do for you. But if you live in North Dakota, you need something a little more substantial than a blanket on the ground. Okay, so now that the Snug Pack Scorpion 210 is out of the way, here we have the rifle butt cover that you can get separately from Everly Stock, which integrates right into the pack. So the Everly Stock Low Drag, as well as a bunch of their other packs, has an internal rifle scabbard, which is really nice. And you can fit AR-15s, bolt actions, shotguns, or you could even take something like an AR pistol or my MCX and throw it in here without extending the scabbard, which there is an extension at the bottom, which I think is really nice for them to be able to have all of that figured out for this type of a system. Now, this cover could come in handy. It keeps your rifle out of the elements a little bit better and it keeps you concealed. So if you didn't want to necessarily broadcast the fact that you had a rifle with you, this is a good way to cover it. Now, as you can see, it buckles right into the backpack itself. So we'll go ahead and take these off and it has them on the backside as well, okay? Go ahead. Once these are removed, this just comes right off. And there you have it. We lost a scope cover, so no big deal. But basically your AR can ride right in the scabbard right here. And then if you're not gonna use the cover, these buckles right here will actually go across and you can have them loop over the top of your pistol grip and stuff like that in order to keep the whole unit a little bit more secure. So you have a lot of options here for carrying a rifle. And then even if you're wearing the pack, it's really easy to deploy the rifle right from your back. So this gives you hands-free operation. It lets you climb, it lets you ford a river or whatever else you gotta do if you have a rifle with you without having to have it slung in front of you or carrying it by hand. So it gives you a lot of options and freedom in the sense of mobility. And in a bug out situation, we might not need the rifle 99% of the time, right? So you do want to be able to carry it easily without it always being a burden. So this helps with that quite a bit. Now you can pull this right out. As you can see, it slid out very easily. This is a 20 inch AR, kind of like a recce build I put together. And this would be an ideal type rifle for something of this situation, just because it lets you reach out. It gets the full velocity potential of the cartridge, which means it's better for hunting and things of that nature. And it still has the 5.56 cartridge, which is very lightweight and easy to wield and also lets you carry more ammunition. So we'll go ahead and just clear this and make sure we're safe just because people like to see that. We got 10 round mags in right now because a 30 won't really fit in the scabbard too well. So it gives me something, especially if I'm just taking a quick hunt hunting shot or something along those lines. And then we'll go ahead and just show rifle clear and safe. We'll go ahead and set that down. So as you can see, very convenient to have. And then I'll show you real quick here at the bottom is where we have the scabbard. So this is the bottom of the scabbard, which if everything else we get out of the way would be great. But the bottom of the scabbard hangs right there at the bottom and that's where your barrel goes. So it's actually rubberized, which means that it is waterproof and it gives your barrel a little bit more padding so you're not just slamming your barrel or your muzzle device on the ground every time you set the pack down. So very well thought out. And I think that it's really nice to be able to have my AR or any other rifle with me if we're dealing with an actual dangerous bug out scenario and have to, or be able to carry it without having to have it slung on me or in my hand. So very, very useful. Let's move on to the next part of the pack that we can talk about, which is still on the outer side. Okay, so down here we've got the Snug Pack Tactical 3 sleeping bag, which will keep you warm down to 19 degrees Fahrenheit, which where I live in North Dakota can happen quite often. So I had to make a compromise as having one sleeping bag for the entire year can be kind of difficult here. But at the end of the day, 19 degrees will definitely do the job in summer and spring. And then in the fall, it starts to definitely still work, but get a little bit questionable. And in the middle of winter, this will be not quite enough, but it will still be better than a lot of other sleeping bag options out there. So that's why I chose the Snug Pack Tactical 3. Um, you need to choose what's best for your environment. And then I have it in a Snug Pack dry sack as well because it's mounted to the outside of the bag. So if it does start to rain or anything like that, I don't want my sleeping system to get wet. So I'll go ahead and take this off. And these buckles are just standard nylon straps. They're about an inch wide. So they work really well with Molly webbing and the buckles do a good job of holding everything in. So as you can see here, we've got the dry sack. I'll go ahead and take the sleeping bag out so you can see the compression sack that it's in, which the Tactical 3 actually comes with, which is really nice. All right. And from what I can tell, using the sleeping bag a few times at this point, it's a pretty nice bag. It keeps me really warm, it keeps me uh, comfortable, and then even if you don't need the warmth, you can use it as a secondary pad, so it kind of gets you off the ground a little bit better. And then as you can see here, go ahead and 
show you some of the ratings there on the bottom of the bag. Um, but it basically tells you that the comfort zone is gonna be 19 degrees Fahrenheit, and then the um, low will be 10 degrees. So that's a relatively common temperature here in North Dakota, and that can definitely get you through a very precarious scenario if you need it to. So that's why I chose this bag. This thing weighs about four pounds. So, you know, it's a little on the heavier side, but it's also gonna make sure I don't die from being too cold. So we'll go ahead and move on from there because there's other things on the outside of the pack still that we need to talk about before we start opening it up. So right here is an Eberly stock saddle pouch. This is made for water bladders particularly, but what's nice is that it's on the back of the pack and it can be used as a dump pouch or whatever else you need it for, trash, anything else that you don't necessarily want in your bag, but you still need the storage room for. But in this one, I do actually run a water bladder. So this is a secondary water bladder for me because there's another one within the pack. There's a D ring for organization stuff if I need it. And what this does is it gives me another water bladder to fill if my other one is already filled without having to access it from inside of the pack. And this also allows someone who might be behind me to drink water from behind me if they're following me in a line or whatever it might be. So this gives me the opportunity to get more water. And this is not full right now, but I do have the total weight of the bag and everything at the end of the video, which with all the water and everything said, this pack currently holds, let's see, 180 ounces of water. So it's quite a bit of water, um, which is a lot of weight, but you need water or you're going to die. So this gives me the opportunity to have more water on me. And at the same time, if I don't need the water or if I can't afford the weight at that time, then I can drop it or whatever else I need to do. And I do like the fact that someone else can drink from behind me as I do have a family with small children. And so if they're following me and we're walking down the road or whatever it might be, someone can drink some water without having to take off their pack or without having to access my water or whatever else it's going to be. So a lot of handy utility here to have this on the back of the pack. And then real quick, since we're already here, we can talk about this, which is the Eberly Stock uh, shooter's rest. So this attaches right to the molly paneling and then allows you to have a rifle rest right on your pack, which is nice because the pack itself provides camouflage and cover. And then you can use this as a makeshift bipod of sorts. And that's why I didn't see a bipod on my rifle because although it'd be a perfect setup for a bipod, it doesn't really fit very well in the internal scabbard when you run a bipod. So this gives me something to rest the rifle on and to hide behind in order to get better concealment and better cover, especially when in the prone position. So this is something that I find to be really nice, especially because it blends in well with the bag and it's made specifically for this purpose. And this molly webbing right here on the top portion was the exact right size for this rifle rest mount. So. Very cool system. Eberly Stock makes really good stuff. And all the fabric you see in the video today that's Eberly Stock um, is water resistant as well. So even though I will show you that I have a rain fly with me for the pack, this stuff will prevent the water from getting in in the interim until you get everything covered properly. So let's go ahead and start moving on to what's on the waist belt since it's still technically on the outside of the pack before we open it up. All right, so this is the left waist strap of the pack. And the waistbands on these packs have molly all over them. So it gives you a lot of opportunity to mount things. And I've taken advantage of all the possible space because this is a bag that I might never come home with. So I need to have quite a bit of stuff. And then I can always dump it if I find out I don't need it later. Now, first on this side is gonna be my radio pouch. Now this is a very basic radio pouch, but it does the job and it keeps my radio handy right at my left hand in case I need to use it or if I need to talk to somebody or if I'm just scanning or whatever else it might be. It keeps everything very close by and easily usable. So I have that right here in the front. And then we move on to this side, which is the Everly Stock general purpose pouch or like an admin pouch basically. And the way they mount things is pretty cool. It's molly, but it uses buckles. So I find that to be pretty useful and easy to do. And then in this pouch, because it's handy and I can get to it very quickly, I have the things I might need while I'm still walking without wanting to take off my pack, okay? So, let's see, these are some wipes because you know sometimes you gotta wipe some things and that's just how life works. So I don't have to explain that, but if I do have to explain that, then I'm sorry. And there's a book called Everybody Poops that you should probably read. Now, over here, I have a Vortex RT Solo, which is a monocular. Um, it gives you a ranging reticle, which is really nice for being able to see far away. It gives you eight times magnification. It's really useful. It has a belt clip as well. So if you wanna just throw it on your belt instead, you can. But I need this handy so that I can range, so that I can scout, so that I can see what's coming up ahead. And at the same time, it's very useful in the sense of if I was employing maybe a shorter barreled firearm, like an MCX or something like that, that had 
I don't know, per se a nine inch barrel. Well, in that case, I can then range the target and find out whether or not engagement distance had been reached. So that gives me a lot of opportunity there. And this is a really nice optic. The other reason I went with a monocular instead of binoculars is because they're lighter weight, they're more compact. Sometimes they tend to be more robust because there's less, less things to go wrong. And at the same time, um, I have a weird eye condition where I only use one eye at a time. So there's always that. Now, after that, Let's see, I've got five hour energy. So this is a quick pick me up in case I'm getting tired, but I gotta keep going. And then I've got some sustenance. This is a, a caffeine infused protein bar. Now the reason I have this is because of the same reason as a five hour energy. If I don't have time to set up camp or to get food out of my pack, but I need something to keep moving, then I need to be able to access it very easily. And that's why this is in there. Okay, and then I have a compass because it's good to know where you're going. And this one's used for, um, you know, integrating with a map, but you can also use it just to find your bearings, which is very important when you're on the move. And then uh, I have some earplugs too. Now, why do I have earplugs? Well, in case I have to take a quick shot with the rifle and maybe it's for hunting and to put some food on the table, um, this way I don't damage my hearing and it's not a big deal. Now, if you're in a tactical situation, of course, you're not gonna worry about earplugs right then and there, but this gives me the option in case I'm doing something that's not as speedy, let's just say. So that's what's in the GP pouch. Really nice pouch, no complaints about that. It is starting to rain, which is interesting because, you know, of course, that's the only time it rains out here is when it's the day I'm doing a video outside. But I'm gonna go ahead and get this put away and we're gonna move on to the next pouch and we're gonna see if we can just deal with the rain and keep this thing going or if I'm gonna have to take a quick break here. But you know what? I don't care about getting wet. I don't think you do either. Now, here is a water bottle pouch. But what I wanna show you too is right here in between, if I can get this to work without knocking the camera over, I've got a pistol magazine pouch right here, okay? With a mag in it. And then I've got a rifle pouch right here now this is a condor universal mag pouch now what's nice about this pouch is it's inexpensive and it holds two 30 round ar mags or one 308 20 round mag or 25 round mag um, or it holds you know three larger pistol mags like you can put three glock 33 round magazines in it or you can put three 21 round p320 mags in it whatever you want it fits quite a bit in it and it can be a general purpose pouch so for the purpose of a armed bug out this would generally have two 30 round magazines in it and i do have the full weight of all that that i'll tell you later in the video but um, i don't have those for demonstration purposes today because let's just say this platform that you're watching this video on doesn't like 30 round magazines for some reason. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and avoid any issues there by showing those in the video, but I will demonstrate how these pouches work here in a minute because this is not the only one on the system. So like I said, you got a pistol mag here, which is accessible from your um, offhand if you're wearing the pack, and then these rifle mags are also accessible too. So you can have some reloads on you without having to have a belt system or a chest rig or anything like that. Now I have the bottle pouch. So in here, which Let's see, got a little tear in it the other night when I got hooked on a tent stake, but you know what? Who cares? It's just how it goes. Uh, we've got the zipper right here. And here is a 40 ounce bottle of water and it's stainless steel and it's not insulated. Why is that? So I can cook with it if I need to. I can boil water right in it if I need to. And it's relatively durable. So that's why I use this bottle in particular, okay? And that's 40 ounces of the total 180 ounces that's in the pack. And then in this pouch, which is attached to the water bottle, I assumed I should just put all the water related stuff inside of it so that it's all kind of organized and kept together. So in this pouch, we've got Sawyer mini system. So you have the bag, the straw and the plunger in case you need to wash out your filter. Okay. And then we have another Sawyer Mini. Now there's another one in the pack that's actually integrated directly into a water bladder, but it's good to have a separate one because it's always good to have a backup plan, of course. And these don't weigh very much at all. So having an extra really isn't a big hindrance. And I think it's worth its weight for sure, okay? I mean, they can filter up to 100,000 gallons of water, some crazy number like that, as long as you maintain them correctly. But at the end of the day, this is a good tool to have with you because you gotta drink water or you're gonna die. Now, what else do I have in here? Well, I have Propel, so these are electrolytes that you just dump right into your water and helps you, you know, continue what you need to be doing. So definitely good to be able to rehydrate and put electrolytes back into your body. And then I have some Folgers Instant Coffee too, which is really nice because I need coffee every single day of my life or I'll become a bad person. So all I gotta do is heat up some water, throw this in there and boom, I got coffee. So this gives me some of those vitals when it comes to things I can throw in water that make my life better. And then I also have a couple vials of iodine and iodine tablets obviously they purify water they make sure it's clean they get rid of disease and stuff like that in the water and what's really nice when you're running things like the bladder which i just showed you over here in this pouch 
you can fill that with water and then you can uh, stick one of these iodine tablets right in it. And then while you're walking, you can have your water purifying in your pack without having to worry about filtering it or anything like that in the meantime. So iodine is still a good thing to have even if you have a water filter. And water filters like the Sawyer Mini don't necessarily kill viruses or things of that nature. So it's good to have an additional way to deal with that, um, whether or not it's boiling or using these iodine tablets. So that's what's in this part right here. Okay, and like I said, we're going through kind of the outside of the pack first to kind of just make sure we cover all our bases there. And since we're over in this vicinity right now, and I'm just trying to stuff everything back in here so you're not bored by me repacking, um, I can go ahead and show you that right here on the side, there's like a little secondary pouch, and a lot of people would use this for a water bottle or something like that. But what I have in here is something that's very important, which is gloves. Okay, so it's always good to have a good pair of gloves. Now these are Cyrus Hyperlite gloves. Now what's nice about these gloves is that they're not necessarily the best for like work gloves. They're not as good as like mechanics wear or something like that when it comes to really doing stuff and getting dirty and whatnot. But what these are good for is they are windproof, waterproof, and they have a little bit of insulation. So they're good, you know, year round gloves except for maybe deep summer, but they still have the, um, I don't know, this is like some kind of faux leather padding on the palm as well as on the uh, trigger finger and on your thumb. So they do a good job of being work gloves when you need them to be, but they also keep your hands warm and dry if that's what you need them for as well. And here in North Dakota, that's a big deal. And I don't know what environment I'm gonna be walking into when things go south. So it's nice to have an additional pair of gloves if I'm already wearing one. And if I don't need gloves, eventually I definitely will. And these can do at least the bare minimum job of trying to keep your hands a little bit warmer while also being able to be worked with. So definitely good to have a good pair of gloves with you. And the Cyrus Hyperlites are pretty cool. I, I think they're actually pretty nice and they're underrated. I don't think a lot of people know about them, but they do a good job of keeping you somewhat warm, dry, and everything else related to that. And I find them to be pretty comfortable to shoot in as well. So that's something to keep in mind. Now we'll go ahead and move over to the other side of the waist belt so you can see what's over there. And I swear we will eventually get into the actual pack, I promise. Okay, so this is the right side of the waistband, and this is where I'm gonna have some utilitarian or emergency use items because I'm right-handed, so it just makes sense. Now, the first thing you'll see here is a knife. Now, this is an SE4. It comes with the scabbard, and then you can buy a Molly backplate adapter for it in order to mount it on things like this waistband. And having a high-quality fixed blade knife is important to survival. You have to have one. It's the number one tool you'll need in any survival kit. And the SE4, which is what this knife is, is a really nice knife. This is a high-carbon steel. You want to fixed blade knife that has a full tang which means it can handle any abuse you might give it and this knife can handle it this knife can baton wood it can carve it can cut cordage it can be used for self-defense whatever you might need a knife for this thing can definitely do it and i like the se4 they're made in the usa and this also has a good balance to it it's not so big i'm not carrying around a rambo knife where i'm going to have to chop a tree down with it so it saves me a little bit of weight but it's still well balanced and utilitarian enough to do the job at hand so i definitely like the se4 knife i think it's a good solid choice if you're looking for a survival knife and this isn't the only knife in my kit because I integrate my EDC into my bug out bag as well which means I do have a backup knife because you can never have enough knives now go ahead and put this back real quick and we'll move on to something that's also very interesting which is how I have this holster mounted right here on the waistband. So this is a Safari Land 6300 series holster. Now what's really cool about this system is that I've got a Molly adapter with their QLS system installed here on the waistband. So what that means is on the back here, there's a fork. I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze that and pull it right out. And this is their QLS fork, right? So this goes into their QLS back plate, which then allows you to have modularity of different holsters if you want to attach them to that particular back plate. So this is the P320 holster. And then you can see here where the back plate sits. So it's got a Molly adapter right on the back. And then this is installed right here. And that allows me to do a few different things. One thing it can let me do is change out which firearm I'm carrying with me. So if I'm going on like a big hunt in the backwoods and I have to worry about things like bears or whatnot, I can switch out to my 460 Smith & Wesson holster and what's nice is that you can just clip that right in and then now I have a different firearm right here on the pack ready to go so that's really nice now the other thing you can do with it which I find to be extremely beneficial is that you can carry or wear something like this on your belt which is what I would do if I was bugging out so this is one of their low ride adapters with the QLS backplate installed on it and I can wear this on my belt this drops it down far enough where it doesn't impede with the waist strap of the backpack but it also allows me then to put my holster on this while it's on my belt and I can 
never leave my holster on the pack. I can always have it with me. So while walking around with the pack on, I can easily make sure I have my firearm accessible and I can draw it right from that holster and then use it in self-defense without having to drop my pack or anything like that. But once I get to camp and establish a base or whatever it might be, and I don't have my pack on any longer, I still wanna be able to be armed and be able to defend myself. So I'm wearing this and it, that allows me to do that with whatever holster I'm using on the system at the time. So I find that to be really modular, really beneficial. This doesn't weigh very much. And like I said, I can just wear it because the waistband of the pack actually rides right on this part. So it doesn't actually hurt me or push any weird pressure points into my waist. So I find that to be very nice and very useful in the sense of being able to always stay armed in one of these types of situations because we are talking about an armed bug out scenario. Now, the other thing I bring with me is this Tolster magazine holder. So you saw the magazine I had in that pouch over by the water bottle. Well, now I can actually put this on my belt line as well and have that spare magazine with me so that I have my firearm and a spare mag and I'm ready to go even if I don't have any of my other stuff on me. So it's always good to have this stuff and these things don't weigh very much. I can wear this on my belt while carrying the pack and then I keep this in the pack in a pouch so that way it's just ready to go and I can clip it right on my belt once I get to camp or once I set everything up and then I have that spare magazine with me just in case I need it. So make sure you have backup plans and contingencies like these in order to make sure your whole system works perfectly without the need for a lot of additional gear that might be heavy or cumbersome, okay? Now, moving on from there, we also have a Refuge Medical Bear Fac. Now, this is a really nice first aid kit. Let's be honest, the Bear Facs are some of the best you can get. They're really well thought out. Now, this is a soft tee tourniquet. Now, this is not a, a Gen 7 cat tourniquet, and the reason for that is that these um, soft tee tourniquets are reusable, whereas the Gen 7 cat tourniquets are generally one-time use. Now, if we're talking about a long-term bug out scenario, I want a tourniquet that I can use more than once because you might have to. You never know, right? So I just thought that that was more beneficial for this system than the, the Gen 7 cat tourniquets, even though those are more user-friendly and a little bit easier to deploy. Then you have your shears over here. Medical shears are great for getting clothes off or whatever else you need to use them for. And once you open the pack, let's see, we've got a SWAT T tourniquet on top, which is just another type of tourniquet that can also be used as like a compression bandage or whatever else you need it for. Um, and I also have some super glue right here in case I get a big wound and I need to seal something up easily. And then in the pack here, you actually get a handle and you can pull that out so that your entire first aid kit is now outside of the bag. So if somebody else is with you, they can grab this right off your belt without you having to take the pack off or anything along those lines. And inside, there's more redundancy, like another tourniquet. So here is the Gen 7 Cat tourniquet right there, which is staged and ready to go. There's gloves, there's markers, there's everything you can think of in here that you need. There's compression bandages, quick clot, there's plenty of gauze, basically anything you might need in an immediate first aid kit. Um, but this doesn't necessarily have things you would need in like a boo-boo kit per se. So make sure you have a quality IFAC. Refuge Medical definitely makes them and you can use the discount code MAGIC over there to get 10% off. So I would suggest doing that if you don't have a quality IFAC of some kind at this point. But you gotta have the ability to take care of yourself, treat wounds and injuries during a bug out scenario because what other time is that more likely to happen? Honestly, we all know bugging out is going to be extremely dangerous. And if we're talking about an armed situation, you need to be able to treat gunshot wounds. You need to be able to treat massive injuries and blood loss. And all of this kit can do some of that for you. So this is definitely a good thing to have. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is just like on the other side of the pack, there is one of those water bottle style pouches right here. So we'll go ahead and talk about what's in it. And this is actually... Everly stock rain fly. So what's nice about this is that I keep it on the outside of the pack because I need it quickly accessible in case it starts to rain really heavy and I need to get everything waterproof quickly. Now, comes in this mesh bag, which is obviously useful for keeping it organized and contained because it does want to kind of pop out of here, right? But what I'll show you is that this thing is elastic, so it's very easy to deploy on the pack. And as you can see, it's got a nice camouflage pattern which will allow you to stay hidden if you need to but the other thing i like about this particular rain fly for the backpack is on the inside it is bright orange and so you can flip this inside out if you need to and run your pack with a super bright orange cover so if you're hunting and you don't want to get shot that gives you that ability and if you need a signal for help or something along those lines you have that option as well so i think that's super beneficial and the other thing i like about this rain fly is that it is super durable it's very heavy duty and it's got an Enough fabric to cover all the stuff in my pack including my rifle and everything else and what's really cool about it is that you could use this as a makeshift shelter if you 
really had to because I mean it'll definitely do the job it is waterproof and it's durable so having a rainfly is a must for any kind of a backpacking scenario and especially bugging out when you don't know if you're gonna be back home or have some kind of viable shelter for a long period of time it's a good redundancy factor in that regard as well so definitely have a rainfly but if you can get one that lets you have a secondary option for signaling for help or an emergency or keeping you from getting shot when you're out hunting can't really go wrong with that now can you so that covers the right side of the pack and what we'll do now is start going into the actual innards of the backpack um, starting with the top pocket and then working our way down okay so let's get into this top pocket because there's a lot of stuff going on in here that i'm sure you want to see what my thought process is regarding it so let's do it now weight matters and you want weight more towards the top of the pack rather than at the bottom of the pack so some of these things aren't necessarily packed based on what i would want quick access to some of them are packed based on weight and how that distributes in the pack so keep that in mind now this is like an accessory pouch that i have right here this is where small gadgets and whatnot are going to go that i don't need necessarily right away but definitely have utility during a bug out situation so in here the first thing you'll see is a headlamp now this is towards the top because if i need it and it starts to get dark then i can grab it relatively easily and then i can wear it or whatever i got to do but what's really nice about this particular headlamp this is a streamlight double clutch which basically allows you to turn on a beam or it lets you turn on more of like a floodlight so that gives you different lighting options and it's also got a rechargeable battery now the rechargeable battery is cool because it's usb rechargeable but if for some reason it fails or you need something that's immediate it can actually take triple a batteries as well so you have dual fuel capability here as well as having the different types of lighting that it offers um, all in a very easy to use package that i trust because streamlight makes really good stuff and uh, this is a pretty quality headlamp so one thing i like about the headlamp too is that it doubles as a lantern inside the tent so what i do is i usually tie this up to one of the hooks that's at the top of the tent and then i turn it on and it allows me to have some ambient light within the tent that i don't need to have uh, my hands for so this can be like a lantern if you need it to be but it's also very useful to have a headlamp for a million other reasons i'm sure you already know why so that being said we'll move on okay this is just a basic knife sharpener um you can use this for you know hooks and stuff too if you need to but just some way to sharpen your knife's a good idea this is not the best one per se but it does the job and it's something that i have with me because you basically just need some way to sharpen a knife all right then let's see we've got bug spray always have bug spray okay you need bug spray and it's important to be able to keep those bugs away because you're going to lose your mind if you don't have a way to keep them at bay during a bug out scenario all right then we have a five hour energy so this is a backup to replenish my general purpose pouch on the waistband with i've got a basic poncho i'll probably replace this with something a little bit more mm, let's just say durable uh, but having a poncho of some kind can be useful um, and even a contractor bag or something might be better than this so that's an option and then emergency blanket it's always good to have a mylar emergency blanket they do the job of keeping you warm during a hypothermic situation they can also help you when you're in shock there's a lot of useful reasons for having a survival blanket around definitely have one of these they weigh nothing um, right in the rain notebook with a right in the rain pen this pen is designed to be used with this particular paper and isn't affected by water either so i think it's a good idea to have the ability to take notes and maybe mark down locations or scouting information or whatever intel you might be acquiring and have a way to stash that away for future use so right in the rain good way to go and then this is a survival fishing kit this is a super basic one i think this is made by the british government but it's got line it's got hooks and all that kind of stuff but one thing i like about the fishing kits for survival is not just about being able to eat but it's also about having the additional line for things like sewing or even just makeshift sutures or possibly if you need to use them for a snare or maybe even like a perimeter alarm there's a lot of uses that fishing line can bring to the table so i like having a fishing kit because yeah i could fish and maybe you know catch some food but in reality there's a lot of other uses that fishing line has that would be almost more beneficial during this type of scenario that we're discussing okay so now this is the climate insulated static v sleeping pad now this is what i slept on you know last night this is what i use when i go out camping and it's insulated which this isn't the best insulation rating of these types of pads but like i said a lot of this system is a compromise of time of year and everything else this gets me some insulation gets me off the ground which will keep me warm and it will do the minimum during the cold winter but it will be almost too much during the summer so it gives you that compromise of if you're going to run one system that can do just about everything you want this can do that so this is a good 
sleeping pad it does a good job and then what i'll tell you is i actually bought this refurbished and it works perfectly and i haven't had any issues but i saved a ton of money on it and i also know that it was inspected by the manufacturer and ensured that it worked properly so i like refurbished things and you might want to check some out um, when it comes to that kind of stuff because you save a lot of money and you know somebody actually had to qc it to make sure it works now it packs up really nicely and neat in there but i also have the climate sleeping pillow here too. This thing weighs nothing and it's worth having because it's just a little bit more comfort and it gives you something to rest your head on besides just your sleeping bag. And that can make a world of difference when you need to sleep. And honestly, you'll need to sleep at some point or you're gonna die. You need to be able to have energy and you can't be exhausted while running around and dealing with SHTF, right? So make sure you have ways to sleep comfortably. And this little climate pillow does a good job of letting me do that while also being able to easily pack down. So I actually packed that right in here in the stuff sack so that way I have that sleeping system kind of bundled together, okay? So like I said, Climate, uh, good insulated sleeping pads, and there's a lot of other brands and a lot of other quality out there you can find, but like I said, refurbished saved me a ton of money. Now, moving on from there, this is a fire starting kit as well as a firearms maintenance kit. Now, this is a little heavy and I'm thinking about uh, basically breaking some of this down and keeping the components more limited. So I might move over towards something more simplified in the end, but at the you know time of this video, this is what I'm working with. So, and like I said, if you guys wanna leave comments below and let me know things that I could save weight on or save anything on, you know, or think that I could do better or have that would be more efficient, please let me know. I'm not opposed to that at all. And this is not me telling you what to do. This is me showing you what I have. I wanna learn just as much as you all and that can help me quite a bit if you tell me things that you know better than I do. So moving on from there, here we have it, okay? So I've got a fire starting kit mostly with a little bit of firearms maintenance. So let's talk about that. So I've got um, weatherproof matches right here. These are windproof, weatherproof UCO matches. They're actually really intense and they actually will light um, like underwater and stuff. They're pretty crazy. So it's good to have multiple ways to start fires based on the environment, maybe not liking whatever it is you're trying to use at the time. Uh, we've got some more waterproof matches right here. Always good to have. And then I've got some mini Bic lighters. It's just always good to have Bics. They always work well, they do a good job, and they're the easiest way to start a fire, let's be honest. So I have some lighters with me too, okay? Then I also have good old fashioned heavy duty ferro rod. Um, these are just good to have because it lets you have fire for a very long time once everything else runs out. If your matches run out, your lighter runs out, ferro rod will do the job for quite a while after the fact. So I always think that's a good thing to have and I think that's something every fire kit should have just because there's really no reason not to, okay? Now, in here I have a folding stove. Now this folding stove is some of the extra weight but also very useful, especially in my environment. So in North Dakota, um, there's not a lot of wood just laying around everywhere, okay? And what this does is it allows me to cook off the ground, okay? It folds out like this, all right? And then it has these tablets inside, these are fuel tablets. So this sets up on the legs and then you put a tablet underneath and then you can cook with it or use it to start a fire or whatever you want. So these could be the same as maybe, you know, your cotton balls with petroleum jelly on them and stuff like that. So these are fire starters, but they also can cook on their own. And these will burn for about 15 minutes straight. And I got water boiling about, you know, eight ounces of water, which is usually enough to get some kind of, you know, freeze dried meal going or whatever. I got that water boiling off one of these tablets within about 12 minutes. So you can do that and use this as a standalone unit and not use any wood at all and still get water boiling and have some way of getting a fire started if you do need that. So I like this, but it is a little extra weight and it's something that I'm still not 100% on. It does get my uh, cooking container off of the ground and it allows me to um, get that heat spread around it a little bit more evenly. So it gives you some other options there too. Now, just something I have, you guys can tell me what your thoughts are in the comments if you like these or you don't, but so far it's worked pretty well and I'm not necessarily opposed to keeping it. Um, although I will admit it has a little bit of weight to it. Okay, put that back here. Try to keep everything organized, you know? That way you know how to access it easily. Okay, so moving on from there, we have the top part, a huge box of matches here. And you know, this is probably unnecessary, but not only are these Strike Anywhere matches, which allow you to, you know, use them in whatever fashion you see fit, but they're also going to be, you know, kindling or whatever else I might need to start a fire with. So this can let me do a few different things if I need to. And it's just nice to have more and more ways to start fire. 
And then here's where we have the firearms cleaning components, okay? So this is an Otis field kit. What's nice about the Otis kits is that they're all in one encompassing. They have, you know, we have like the bore cleaner, we have patches, um, we have the pull through for the snake that you use. It's a cable style cleaning system. And over here you can see there's a lot of different attachments when it comes to brushes and when it comes to jigs and stuff like that. And you have the cable system right here. Now, when you're using the pull through with the cable, you have all kinds of attachments that make that clean your firearm and your barrel properly. And it even has things in here like a nylon brush if you really need to make sure you get in there and clean out some of the components of your firearm. But at the end of the day, this is a pretty intense cleaning kit for the sense of how often do you really need to fully strip down and clean your firearm in a bug out situation. These are things we have to consider, especially when it comes to weight. And one thing I'm considering is that this might be a little excessive for what it is I might need it for. So I'm thinking about breaking this down, going to something a little bit more simplified, like a boar snake and a tube of lube, because in all honesty, if you're firing your firearms enough to have to clean them to this degree of cleaning capability, then things have gone very badly and I don't necessarily know if you've even survived at that point. So let me know in the comments what you think about having something like this with you, especially if you might never make it back home again, or if you think something more simplified is worth the weight reduction, okay? And then over here, I have frog lube. Now, this is something I could replace as well to save a little bit of weight and space, but frog lube's great because it doesn't leak. So you don't have to worry about lube getting all over your stuff or anything like that. This is a pretty much a solid paste when it comes to what it is formed like. And I still have the cover on this one because it's not even open. But what's nice about frog lube is that it keeps things up and running. It's great on knives, guns, just about anything that might need lubrication. Um, it's biodegradable paste and it just doesn't get messy. So it is something that I do like, um, but at the end of the day, I mean, it might not be worth having all this with me when I could save some room and, and wait without it. So keep that in mind. Now that's all that's in this kit. Like I said, subject to change is a big way I approach all of these things. Nothing is permanent for me because if I find something better or more efficient or whatever it might be, I'm probably going to use it. So keep that all in mind and never be afraid to change and adapt your kit based on new information you've learned or things that you've experienced because otherwise you're just doing yourself a disservice. All right, go ahead and get this all zipped up. Of course, the frog lube is becoming a problem right now to kind of prove my point, I guess. All right, now what else is in this top pocket? Okay, so... Here we have the electronics kit. Now this is gonna have batteries, charging cables, and everything related to electronics. And this has everything I might need in the sense of charging different components of the kit. So this is an anchor battery pack. Now this is what I usually try to keep charged in order to charge other items once I get to a base camp scenario or some time to rest or whatever it is. This holds quite a bit of energy in it, which means it can charge my phone a bunch of times, it can charge my radio, it can charge just about anything you might need. Um, at the end of the day, you got to make sure you have this charged so you can get everything else going. And there is a way for me to charge this here in the bag. But moving on from the power bank itself, which is a little bit of weight, but if you're going to have electronics with you, and we're not talking about an EMP, then it's nice to be Able to keep them up and running then you need every other cable you might need in order to do that with so you got usb c's here usb um uh usb well this is for my garmin watch actually which is solar so i might not need this but i just have it in here as a backup um, and then we also have a USB cable for my Baofeng. So this is something that can actually charge that battery directly from the power bank. And then we have another USB to USB-C cable. So just a lot of different cables with a lot of different functionality. And then I have battery chargers as well. So this is an XTAR battery charger. It'll do one battery at a time, but you can keep batteries up and running for the long term without having a lot of weight or excess space taken up by a battery charger. So I do like this. It does the job in a very elementary way. And then, I have some rechargeable CR123s in here. Now I have regular Surefire ones too that I'll do the job immediately, but if you have time to charge things, these are EGTAC rechargeable CR123s. And what's nice about that is if uh, your weapon light goes down and you still need it over the long term, you can keep it up and running for a very long time using that charger. So that's one of the reasons why I have it with me. And that charger will also charge a lot of other batteries as well. Uh, and then we've got a wall charging unit just in case you find yourself in a situation where you have access to electricity through a generalized outlet. This is a good thing to have. And then I also have some of my smaller batteries, like your obscure CR2032, CR1632s, just 
anything you might need for like your small weapon lights or optics or whatever else you're running i think it's good to have backups and you know like i said you never know how long this is going to last you never know if you'll ever be back home again and you might just want them for trade or whatever else might be um you know coming your way in the sense of surviving a long-term shgf scenario so i don't want to ever find myself in a situation where i don't have what i need so having a few extras of things that aren't that heavy and don't take up a lot of space is never a bad way to go and then this is all in a lock sack which is a waterproof bag that is basically like a heavy duty Ziploc, but these are made in the USA and they're really nice. So a lock sack is a good way to go. Um, and I'll have links to a bunch of this stuff in the comments below and some discount codes and all kinds of stuff just to help people out when it comes to putting their, together their own kits. But this is definitely something that I like for the electronics because I gotta make sure those stay dry. Now, moving on from there, let's talk about what goes with that. Now, in here, I actually have something as well, so we'll talk about that in a second, but this is the Off-Grid Trek 28.5 watt solar blanket. Now, what's really nice about this is that it can charge that power bank I showed you. It can charge all those electronics directly. It has multiple different USB um, outlets here. So you have a DC outlet, you have a standard USB outlet, and you have a USB-C. So you have a lot of different options for charging, and this directly charges directly from the sun. So you don't have to worry about, um, you know, charging a battery within something like um, your goal zero torch or whatever. You just charge right to the product that you're trying to put energy into from this uh, solar panel. And this has a nice snap system right here, which keeps it folded. You unsnap it. And you have both sides and then you have these carabiners which can be used to then drape this on the back of your bag so if you're walking you can just start charging things while you're on the move which i find really beneficial like i said there's something else in here just give me a second on that we'll talk about it in a minute but here you are you have your solar panel fully unfolded 28.5 watt capability it weighs about one pound, so it's not extremely heavy, but it definitely brings a lot to the table in the sense of being able to keep your products up and running when it comes to electronics. And I think that's extremely important. And the fact that I can drape this on the back of my bag and plug it into that power bank and be charging that while on the move is hugely beneficial because I'm not wasting time waiting to get to camp to get everything charged up. I can just start doing it while I'm still moving. So I think these are awesome. I am affiliated with Off Grid Trek, and I do have links to this in the description as well. So make sure you check these out. Super beneficial official especially if electronics are still up and running emp might be a different story but you know what if an emp happens i'm going to be saving quite a bit of weight in my pack just throwing it out there okay now inside of that i had a map now this is a waterproof map by Rand mcnally so these are waterproof durable they don't tear you can write on them you can do whatever you want and what's cool is that this is basically north and south dakota Okay, and this lets me get to where I need to go based on at least, you know, using roads and tells me where water bodies are gonna be and things of that nature. So this will help me navigate to where I'm going, which I already know where it is, but if I end up not getting there or things happen that prevent me from getting to my bug out location, at least I have a way to kind of navigate my uh, next leg, leg of the journey, okay? So this is always good to have. Have a map, have some way to navigate where you are and where you're going, all right? Now, let's see here got cordage okay you got to have cordage you got to know your five c's of survival right well cordage is one of those c's so this is 100 feet of 550 cord and then i have some duct tape here folded up and ready to go so being able to repair things being able to um you know rig up a structure or some kind of a shelter or whatever it might be there's a million reasons why you might need cordage even if it's just to replace shoelaces who knows what but just make sure you have some this is 100 feet that might even not even be enough but at the same time it gets me somewhere and then i can start using other things too if, uh, if it ever comes down to it so cordage and tape the tape can help fix your tent it can help fix your sleeping pad it can help fix just about anything you can even use it for first aid if you need to so duct tape is always good to have take it off the roll fold it onto itself and and make a nice flat lightweight package for your duct tape and you won't have to have that giant bulky roll that a lot of people will try to keep all right moving on from there since they're falling out anyway we've got some heavy duty industrial zip ties now these can be used for a lot of things they can be used for rigging up a shelter or anything like that as well but they can also be used for restraints if need be and if we're talking about an armed bug out scenario there might be a situation where you got to restrain somebody so i like to have some of these on me they can do a lot of different jobs very well and they're very lightweight and easy to store okay moving on from there Okay, we're starting to get into food and stuff, but here's one tool I definitely want to show you all. And this is the Pocket Boy from Silky Saw. Now, I might be able to drop this to save a little bit of weight, but one thing I found about the plastic container it comes with is it keeps sap and any other gross stuff that's all over your saw from getting all over your pack. And you know how sticky sap can be, so that might be something you want to consider. Now, 
Here is the Silky Saw itself. It's very lightweight, very um, easy to pack away. It folds and it's super durable and it does a great job of chopping through wood. I mean, this thing just handles wood branches like they're nothing. And I don't think you can get much better of a handsaw than this. Um, it's very compact, easy to carry, lightweight, and I can basically deal with any wood cutting situation I might need to deal with while on the go. And I don't even think I'm under gunned in the sense of the type of equipment I'm using. Like I felt very confident cutting through some very large branches with this particular saw. So use what's best for you. You might need a bigger saw based on your environment. In North Dakota, I barely have any trees, so I'm not gonna run into a giant sycamore or something like that. But um, at the end of the day, even for its size, you'd be surprised at how well this can process wood. And you can also use this on things like bone and stuff if you're processing game. So that's another thing to keep in mind is if you're talking about putting food on the table and we're talking about hunting in the middle of an SHEF scenario, which isn't the most likely way to get food, but it is a possibility. Well, you might need to process that game and you might need to cut through bone and this can do that. And there's other reasons why you might have to cut through bone during SHTF, which aren't as pleasant, but at least you have the capability to do that if that need arises. So I really like the sil Silky Saw. The Pocket Boy is awesome. This is the Outback Edition, which... Um, basically has like a different type of grip and stuff to it and it's meant specifically for the outdoors and for bushcraft versus some of their more garden related saws. So check out Silky, Silky Saw and this is a great item to have in any bug out bag in my opinion, okay? So that being said, I really like this thing and there you have it. Now we also have food. So right here is an MRE. Now this is just a blue line MRE. This is like 900 calories, but this is just for some variety. Honestly, MREs aren't that great. There's a lot of reasons why they're um, not the best, but one of the main reasons is that they make tons and tons of trash. So this is not really my go-to, but this is so like if I need to give somebody a pick-me-up or if I need to change a pace or whatever, or if I just haven't eaten for a while, I got an MRE ready to go. It's easy food. It doesn't require fire or cooking or anything. It just is what it is, right? So I got an MRE in there. And then we can talk about the other food too, which I have two of these UST survival ration bars. Each one of them will provide you 2,400 calories of food. And the idea behind the food here is that, look, food is, is very heavy. Um, to get calorically dense food, it's going to be heavier and heavier, but it takes up less space, which is nice. These last a long time. And at the same time, um, my bug out location isn't that far away, so I know exactly how much food I might need in order to get there. So that's a big part of this whole kit is you got to know how much you need in order to make it to your destination. And this food will definitely get me to my current destination. Now, whether or not I make it, there's a different story, but you got to have the idea you can never carry enough food to live on forever. So no matter what amount of food you bring with you, at some point you're going to need more. So always keep that in mind. Don't weigh yourself down with too much food because let's be honest, human beings can live a long time without food. Not so much without water. Now, moving on from there, the last thing in the large portion of the pack, and as you can see here, what's nice is that this pack has the separators. Um, so these are um, rigid, which means they protect things like that solar panel very well. Then you also have this separator, which allows you to get into the bottom part of the pack if you want, but I like that it separates everything so that I can distribute weight better. And then you have your pouches back here for water bladders and stuff of that nature. And that's exactly what's in here is my water bladder. So this is a source water bladder. Um, and you saw one of these earlier. I have two of them in the pack. They both hold 70 ounces of water and this sits right in here and then right here is where the hose comes out and i have the sawyer mini integrated right into the hose so this goes right in here um, the water passes right through it and then you're filtering your water as you're drinking it so it's really nice and handy and if you have to throw water in there on the fly and then just drink it even if you didn't have a chance to treat it properly or boil it or whatever at least you have some kind of filtration going through right here so an inline system is cool to have for Sawyer Minis. The reason I don't have one installed on the other one is because it's more of a backup water source. And if I need to filter that water, I will, but I also can just throw an iodine tablet in it or whatever else I need to do. So there's some different options and reasons behind that, but this is an inline system right here, which I think works really well. And then of course, this is what I'm drinking through most of the time. Now, one thing that's cool about the source bladders is if you see right here, they open up here, of course, for filling and whatnot, but they also open up up here. So what you can do is you slide this part right off and then this part opens and then now you have a wide mouth 
of the water bladder so you can fill it very quickly and very easily or you can empty it very quickly and easily so it gives you that option which i like a lot now these leak just a little bit at times depending on how much pressure is being put on them so you have to keep that in mind if you want to keep everything super super dry then you might want to keep this either in some sort of like a bag or you might want to even keep it outside in that saddle pouch that i showed you earlier so you don't have to worry about the water messing with any of your other gear but that's what's in the top pocket everything in here has a purpose everything in here um you know needs to be there for the most part but there are some things where i could possibly save some weight or be more efficient with so like i said make sure you guys let me know in the comments what you think and now let's move down to the bottom pocket of the pack okay so now we're finally at the big bottom pocket here okay and keep in mind you're trying to keep weight a little bit lighter in the bottom and a little heavier towards the top in order to distribute it better um, so that's why the things that are in here are in here but some things are going to weigh a lot no matter what you do all right so first and foremost right here i've got two condor universal rifle pouches now Condor is not the best stuff, but their stuff does the job. And for what I'm using it for, I really like these. So these universal rifle pouches are cool because like I said before, they hold two 30 round mags. They can hold three 33 round Glock mags. They can do a lot of cool stuff, but they can also just be general purpose pouches as well. So it helps you with organization. Now in these ones, just to demonstrate, this one has three six hour 21 round magazines in it, right? So what's nice about that, these P320 mags, I can fit three of them in there. And that also shows you you can fit three 33 round Glock mags as well. Um, same real estate, right? And then in this one, we have two 10 round 556 mags. So show you that they can stack on each other like so. Now what else is cool, which I'll show you right now, is that you can take one 556 mag and then you can put two of the p320 mags on top of it so if that was a 30 round 556 mag you could put two 21 round mags on top of it and be good to go so for this whole setup the way it runs currently i have five 30 round 556 mags and then i have three 21 round p320 mags in the kit okay and that's not including what's in the rifle and in the pistol but that gives you an idea of how much ammunition and how many magazines i'm carrying with me it's not a full combat loadout per se but bugging out isn't necessarily a combat situation but if we're talking about armed bug out you want to at least have the capability to have additional reloads and ammunition on you and all the ammunition i'm bringing with me is in magazines because at the end of the day that just seems to make sense to me now we have like I said, the 10 round mags here, but two of them can stack in here. You really can't go wrong with that. And these could easily be 30 round mags, as you can tell. And then we have the three pistol mags. So I'll put those back real quick here. And that's just how I carry my spare ammunition and have the idea of being able to reload if need be. And like I said, these rifle, uh, universal rifle pouches from Condor are definitely cool and do a good job and there is that molly webbing right here on this part of the panel which allows them to kind of just stay there and be stationary now inside the actual pocket here uh, we got a few things so here is a medicine bag now in here is just about everything i've got band-aids because my ifac's not a boo poo kit so i gotta have the ability to just use some regular band-aids i've got um, neosporin antibiotic cream i've got uh, cold and flu medicine i've got stomach medicine pepto-bismol i've got a bunch of toilet paper tablets to have additional wipes and whatnot if need be and then i'm covering this right here because in this pill bottle is actually from jace medical um, it's antibiotics it is um, doxycycline so it's good general purpose antibiotic that's good for infections and wounds and stuff of that nature but it has my name on it so i don't necessarily want everybody to see it but the idea behind it is that technically if you have a prescription it should be in its original bottle if you're going to be traveling and stuff i'll probably take it out if we're talking about an shtf scenario but for now i just left it in the bottle but you can see i have other meds like allergy pills and ibuprofen in a ziploc bag and then i have the labels inside that bag with it and the reason i'm not taking all this out is because Yes, there's things in here with my name on it, and I don't need everybody to see that, but that's what's in this bag. Medicines that are general, you're going to need allergy medicine, pain management, you want to have stomach management when it comes to things like Pepto-Bismol and stuff like that, because you're going to have a problem eating all the crap you're going to be eating. And then you need antibiotics to deal with any infections you might run into. I also have um, azithromycin. I think that's how you say it. Who knows? But anyway, azith azithromycin is actually... Um, 
what you would use for um, traveler's diarrhea and stuff. So I do have a few things in here that will definitely keep you up and running. And it is important to have this type of kit. So have medicine and have boo-boo stuff as well, like band-aids and antibiotics. You can't just have an IFAC or a blowout kit and then deal with, you know, a cut on your finger. Now, moving on from there and without giving away all of my personal information, um, I also have hygiene. So this is a hygiene kit. Oh, I got some like coffee on it or something, no big deal. But at the end of the day, um, what I have in here, I've got a little bit of deodorant, I've got some nail trimmers, uh, one razor, some toothpaste, a toothbrush, and some baby powder. Um, Gold Bond or something would probably be better because it's not scented, but this is for, obviously, if you're gonna be walking a long time wearing a pack, you need to keep things dry and you don't wanna get jock itch or anything like that. So this can help with that a lot. It can also help your feet and everything too. And then of course, these are actually Bravo Sierra USA antibacterial body wipes. So what's really cool about these is that they're basically a huge baby wipe that's made specifically for giving yourself a bath. So I've got a few of these in here. And what that does is it allows me to take a, a bath or give myself some kind of semblance of, you know, like a shower or something while on the move. So I can keep my body clean. I can keep myself refreshed and I can keep myself from getting sick from not taking care of myself. So you still need to have hygiene the deodorant doesn't necessarily need to be there but i like it because once your armpits start sweating and things you know can get a little bit bad in that department you also tend to get rashes and stuff and this just helps keep me a little dry in that department and it can be a nice refresher if you want to try to smell a little better and whatnot so all this stuff is just good you need general hygiene you need to be able to take care of yourself your teeth are very important when it comes to your heart health and stuff so having a toothbrush and stuff makes sense and then i got a razor because you know i'm trying to do that whole bill dukes from predator thing where i'm going to be shaving my sweat off of my face all day long now Moving on from there, um, here is a compressible down jacket. Now I live in North Dakota and it can get cold just about at any point in time. So what this does is, uh, this is an Eddie Bauer jacket. I wear a large tall, it's just how it works when you have long arms like I do and you're a pterodactyl at heart. And what that does is lets me have something that will keep me warm and this jacket is actually rated for negative 15 degrees so this is very compact packs very well and it will keep me warm and dry as it also has a dwr finish on it so at the end of the day this is a weather jacket, a storm jacket. This will help keep me dry, keep me warm. It's just something worth having. So I have this jacket in here because you never know when you're gonna need it, especially where I live. Moving on from there, cooking. I might need to cook sometimes. I might need to boil stuff sometimes. I might need coffee, I might need food, who knows what it is. This is just a Stanley cook cup. It's very basic, but it does the job. It's not super heavy um, and Got a little lid here that helps with boiling and whatnot, or even just storage. And then inside, you can see the handle pops out here and can be used like so, which isn't too bad. Inside, I have a microfiber cloth. Now this is for cleaning and stuff like that, to try to keep the cookware relatively clean and just wiping things out if I need to. And then inside, what this also helps with is keeping rattle down because I have a folding titanium spoon here because, well, really it's a spork, because you need these things. You gotta be able to eat and you gotta be able to eat comfortably, so make sure you have some way to do that. And then I also have a can opener because you never know if you're gonna run into canned food or whatever else it might be. This is extremely small and lightweight and it'll do the job of opening cans if I run into them and I need it. And it's a lot easier to use this than trying to use a knife or something like that where you're likely to cut yourself and get an infection and die. So that being said, cookware is important. You gotta have a container. You gotta be able to boil water or even just cook food. And this allows me to do that. And these little Stanley um, cups are pretty cool. They hold 20 ounces of fluid. And they also come with two little plastic cups as well. But I took those out because I don't need them and they're extra weight that I definitely didn't need. Now, the last thing in this pouch is clothes. This is a full change of clothes. This is two pairs of underwear, two pairs of merino wool socks, which are great for hiking and great for getting moisture and everything off of your body. And then this is two, or actually, well, it's a pair of hiking pants and a pair, or a, a, you don't call it a pair, a hiking long sleeve shirt that packs down and is an extremely lightweight. So the pants and the shirt are very lightweight. They pack down very small and they also are water resistant. So that gives me a little bit of a change of clothes as well as layers if I need them. But at the same time, um, you never know where you're gonna end up or what you're gonna be doing or how many pairs of clothes you're gonna go through. So you gotta have additional clothing. Sometimes people talk about having just weather layers when it comes to like Gore-Tex pants and stuff like that. And that might be a good option depending on your environment. Um, but for me, I want the ability to change clothes or layer up and wear additional clothes on top of what I'm wearing based on how cold it might get. So this is what I have um, in the sense of clothing. And then this is in a dry sack because you don't want your clothes to get wet. So I store them in this, which helps keep them from, you know, getting wet and then being useless if I ever need them because I got wet. So that's everything in the bottom pocket. 
So let's do a quick overview of the bag and everything else. And I'll give you some parting thoughts and I'll tell you how much everything weighs with the total loadout. Um, and whether or not you think that is a reasonable amount is something else we can discuss. All right, now that we've gotten into the guts of the bag and you've seen all the gear and everything I'll have with me in a bug out situation, I know the big question is going to be, how much does all of this weigh? How much weight does this kit bring to the table? Well, I can tell you with five 30 round 5.56 magazines fully loaded and three 21 round magazines of nine millimeter and 180 ounces of water, this bag comes in at 62 pounds, which sounds pretty heavy, but there are heavier bags out there and you can do 62 pounds. Once you add in the firearm, AR-15 with a scope on it and a P320 or a Glock 45, some kind of polymer 9mm, you're adding about 11 or 12 more pounds of weight. So we're talking 73, 74 pounds total. That being said, you do have to train with this gear and you have to get out and actually see if you can huff with it on. If you can't actually make it happen, then you're going to have to lighten the load because you got to be able to be mobile. But the other thing to keep in mind for those of you who are thinking ultra light or you want 20% of your body weight or whatever it's going to be, just keep in mind that you might not ever be back home again. You might be leaving with everything you'll ever possess again in the future and you don't want to limit yourself just because you want to be fast on your feet and to be honest with you i've got a family who's not going to be any faster than me so no matter what i'm going to be going at a pace that i'm going to have to slow down for that being said, there is one other thing here. You might notice this pouch right here on the shoulder pad. This is just for additional ammunition, which is used for when I'm out doing actual hunting or something and I have my 460 rifle or something along those lines, I can put loose cartridges in here. So I didn't want you to think I forgot what this was right here. That's what it's made for. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that this pack is built to the point where I can still fit through doorways. So you don't want to limit your ability to get into buildings or take shelter or whatever it might be based on the fact that you have your pack just overly piled up with stuff. So I can still fit through a doorway no problem and I can get to where I need to go without being impeded. So all of these considerations need to be made, but at the end of the day, if you're bugging out because things have gotten dangerous to the point where you feel you need firearms, so you need magazines, you need ammunition, you need all the other things we talked about, well, then you need to make sure that you can handle the weight that comes with all of that. And you need to get out and train with your stuff. You need to set your tent up, you need to set up your sleeping system, make sure everything works the way it's supposed to, make sure nothing's torn. There's so much that we could be doing better as preppers when it comes to actually testing out our gear. And the other thing you might wanna mention that um, I'm gonna Cut you off for right now is that I'm missing some crucial items that you didn't see within the pack. Well, I am also integrating my EDC gear when it comes to this particular kit. So I always have an EDC on me no matter what. So what does that include? Well, it includes a handheld rechargeable flashlight. It includes a, another knife, a very sturdy Medford Praetorian knife, which could be easily used for batoning wood and things of that nature, even though it's a block, a lock blade. I also carry a Leatherman Skeletool, which is a good multi-tool that gives you the basic needs you would need from a multi-tool without being overly large or heavy. And that multi-tool is a huge one. A lot of you are wondering where it was, I'm sure. And now you know. And then I also carry another tourniquet and that's a soft tea tourniquet in my pants pocket. And that's just in case I need it and it's right there on my person no matter where my pack is. The other thing I carry that everyone should carry, which I'm sure you do, is a lighter. Because you know what? No matter how much of a fire kit I have in this pack, I might not have it with me when I need to start that fire and I have that in my pocket as well. So all of those things are coming with me as well as my cell phone, but let's be honest. I mean, if we're talking an EMP, then that's just dead weight we're not gonna need. And if we're talking any other scenario, it is a very useful tool to have, so make sure you have it with you. But besides that, I wanted to go ahead and share all of this with you all to not only give you some ideas about what you could be working on in the sense of bug out kits and bug out bags and everything else, but also so that you could help me be more efficient with my kit. So tell me in the comments below, what did you like? What did you not like? What could I save weight on? What could I do better? What's more efficient? Any of that information or advice that you have, it is very well appreciated and I will definitely be reading it because I want to get better at what I'm doing. I don't assume I know how to do everything or that I own all the best gear. I'm just sharing with you all what I have and what I've learned and then hopefully I can learn even more because of what you're gonna tell me down there. So if this video was helpful for you, Please hit the subscribe button, do the like, do the bell, all that stuff. I don't say that very often here on this channel, but honestly, it helps a lot. And YouTube is an interesting place when it comes to channels like mine. So I'm sure you can understand why I might need some additional help in that department. And without anything else to say about my bug out bag for the armed and dangerous SHTF scenario that we might all find ourselves in at one point in time, that's going to be it for Magic Prepper.